we've seen that like single variable calculus, we can use critical points to help find extrema. Unfortunately, there's no obvious analogy for the first derivative test. However, there is a second derivative test. To that effect, let's suppose that f is a function of two variables and h sub f is its hessian. If c is a critical point, then we're going to look at the eigenvalues of the hessian. Now it turns out that c will be a maximum if all of the eigenvalues of the hessian are negative, while it will be a minimum if all the eigenvalues are positive. And a saddle point, so neither a max nor a min, if the hessian has both positive and negative eigenvalues. This is very similar to the test that we saw in single variable calculus, where a negative second derivative gave a maximum and a positive second derivative gave a minimum. It's just that now we have to look at the eigenvalues of the Hessian matrix. It also turns out that if any of the eigenvalues are zero, well then this test is inconclusive and you don't know anything. We'll put this to work by finding and classifying the critical points for the following multivariate polynomial. Now there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this problem, so I'm going to skip some of the steps as necessary, and I'll leave it to you to fill in those remaining details. Our first step is to grind out the gradient, which we can do as follows. The critical points are where the gradient is equal to zero, so I'll let you check for yourself that if we do that we get the following three pairs of points. Next, we compute the Hessian for general x and y, where it turns out not to depend on y, and that three of the four terms are actually constants. We'll start then with the point negative 2, negative 4, which gives us the following Hessian matrix. And here, again, I'm not going to go through the work necessary to find the eigenvalues, but we'll instead just write them down for you. Both of these turn out to be negative, telling us that negative 2, negative 4 is a maximum. Next up is the point 0, 0, whose eigenvalues are actually the easiest to find of all three matrices. And in doing so, we find one positive eigenvalue and one negative eigenvalue. Thus, 0, 0 is a saddle point. Finally, we look at 4, 8, whose Hessian matrix is the following. And if we work out its eigenvalues, in this case, both end up being negative, meaning that 4, 8 is a local maximum. Okay, so even skipping all of the eigenvalue computations, this ended up being a lot of work. However, in the very special case that our function is one of two variables, we can simplify our second derivative test. Writing this test as a theorem, suppose then that f is a C2 function of two variables, and that C is a critical point. Let's let D be the determinant to the Hessian matrix, which we recall is sometimes just called the Hessian. If D is negative, then C is a saddle point. If D is positive, well, then we're going to have to look at the top left element of the Hessian, which we know is the xx derivative. If it's positive, then C is a minimum. And if it's negative, then C is a maximum. And if D is somehow zero, well, then again, we just don't know anything. Now you don't have to use the top left element of the Hessian, and you could instead use the bottom right element, the yy derivative. It's just important that you use one of the elements along the main diagonal. Now the reason this theorem works is that the determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. If the determinant is negative, this means that the sign of the eigenvalues are different, leading to a saddle point. If the determinant is positive, then the eigenvalues have the same sign, either both positive or both negative, 
and by checking one of the elements of the main diagonal, we can determine which scenario is true and apply the second derivative test. So, to avoid computing eigenvalues in the example above, we're going to compute determinants instead. The Hessian at negative 2, negative 4 has a negative determinant. Thus, we look at the xx derivative in the top left corner and see that it's negative meaning that negative 2, negative 4 is a local maximum. We repeat this process for the Hessian at the point 0, 0, wherein we get that the determinant here is negative, and hence a saddle point. Finally, the Hessian at 4, 8 gives us a positive determinant. So again, we're going to have to look at the xx derivative. This is negative, telling us that 4, 8 is a local maximum. The second derivative test is thus the only test that we have for classifying local maxima and minima, so be sure to familiarize yourself with it.